Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are all today. So thank you so much to the Hunter's Hope Organization for inviting us to introduce Affinia Therapeutics to you. Um, we're really excited to be here. Um, I wanted to show this slide because the title, Changing the Lives of People Affected by Devastating Disease, is the thing that brings us all to work every day. And it is how, what we focus on each and every day as we come here to help develop gene therapies. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. So just as a brief introduction, Affinia is a small company. We're about 50 people founded in 2019 in Waltham, Massachusetts. Um, next slide, if you would, please. So Waltham is not the hub that is Cambridge in the biotech world, but we are just west of there and very much integrated into the Boston biotech community here in Massachusetts. If you could go to the next slide for me. Uh, this is our leadership team here at Affinia, and many of them are uh, proven gene therapy experts. And so if you'll go to the next slide for me, uh, you'll see that our chief executive officer, our chief manufacturing officer, and our chief medical officer were all at Avexis, which is the company that brought the AAV gene therapy for SMA um, to the patients in need in that, in that disease, in that therapeutic area. And they are with us helping to guide our way. Um, and I believe Petra is also listening in on the call today. If you could go to the next slide for me. So we want to talk a little bit about the Affinia AAV gene therapy. So next slide for me, please. Um, just to ground us in what a gene therapy is, um, <clears throat> it's important that we understand that what a gene therapy does is introduce, remove, or change genetic material. So that's specifically the DNA or the RNA. And we do this by putting um, instructions into cells of patients to treat specific diseases. Um, and so, as we heard earlier on, on the session today, that that can help to change how proteins are made and enzymes are, are one of those proteins or groups of proteins that are produced by specific cells. So if we could go to the next slide. Um, we've been hearing a lot about um, ex vivo or lentiviral gene therapies and about AAVs or in vivo uh, ex vivo and in vivo gene therapies. And so um, as we heard from Orchard earlier today, the, they are working with a lentivirus platform on an ex vivo gene therapy. And we've heard from several other companies today that are working on AAV or in vivo gene therapies. And that's what Affinia Therapeutics is working to develop. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. So. Um, as you can imagine, over time, there has been a growing number of clinical studies in gene therapy, and more than 3,300 people have been treated in clinical trials through 2018 in gene therapies, and these are AAV uh, gene therapies. And if you look at the figure here on the right, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but if you look at these light blue bars, those represent the numbers of trials that reached their safety or their safety and efficacy the endpoints for the trial. So that means that they have been specifically studying the safety of these AAV gene therapies and they met those predetermined endpoints for safety. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about um, the different pieces of the gene therapy and what it is that um, Affinia is particularly doing within this space. So the AAV is the adeno-associated virus and the outside shell of the AAV is called a capsid. Um, and what that is used, as we've heard earlier today, is it's used to package the gene therapy elements. So it's really that outer shell that gets wrapped around all of the other important pieces um, of the gene therapy. And different capsids, um, and there's many of them, hundreds of them, are attracted to different tissues or cells in the body, and that's known as tropism. Um, so we, um, we use different capsids for different diseases or different therapeutic areas because they will naturally go to different parts of the body and be preferentially used there. Also importantly is that AAVs aren't known to cause disease in humans. So while they have virus in their name and that can be a little scary, it is important to remember that AAVs are not known to cause disease. The other pieces that are important here are the ITRs or inverted terminal repeats. And that's, that is what tells the 
genes, the DNA that we're putting together that, hey guys, it's time to come together and form this vector, this, this AAV vector. There's also the promoter, which is a sequence of DNA that's needed to turn a gene on or off, and it can help limit where a th therapeutic gene works. So the capsid helps drive, if you will, to use the earlier analogy from the other Elizabeth that helps drive the gene therapy to the right place in the body. And then the promoter says, you know what? We're in a lot of different places, but I only want you to work in this particular cells in this particular cell type in this part of the body. And then the therapeutic gene, that's the big banana here. That's the piece that actually either replaces a gene that's missing in somebody with a disease or fixes a gene or can stop a gene from making the protein that is damaging to them in different, in different diseases. And then we have what are called just other regulatory elements. And these are really important to help tell the cells that are making the RNA from these genes that we're putting into them, where to stop reading the genetic code so that they know, you know what, I've got everything I need here now to make the RNA and to make the protein so that it can help um, define that reading frame. And it also helps the gene therapy to work for longer periods of time. And we here at Affinia are particularly focused on working on developing new capsids that are exquisitely tuned to different tissues and cell types, as well as promoters that, again, will be very specifically tuned to the cell types where we want our gene therapies to work. If you can go to the next slide for me, please. So one of the biggest challenges in delivering gene therapies um, is getting them into the nervous system. So the brain and the spinal cord and other parts of the nervous system. And that's because we have evolved to have barriers to protect our brain and to protect other parts of our nervous system from outside elements. And so we have to work very diligently to develop therapies. And this is true for small molecules or drugs like aspirin, as well as um, for other proteins, as well as the ASOs we heard about before to get into the brain or to get into the central nervous system. We typically have to introduce the therapy directly into the nervous system because of these protective barriers. But even when we do that, especially with the AAV gene therapies, they're not particularly good at getting into the brain. So if you can go to the next slide for me, please. So as I said earlier, one of the things that we're doing is focusing on capsids that have better tropism or better able to get into the brain than other capsids that currently exist. And the figure over here on the left with the little human body and the little dots, that shows many of the naturally occurring AAVs and where they are naturally attracted to go. So the natural tropism of these existing capsids is, is shown here. In the middle panel of this figure, what we see is this funny little evolutionary tree. And over here, right in the middle, circled in blue, is something that's labeled the ANC-80 library. So what we have done here with our founders at the organizations is we found a way to have a really deep understanding of all of the naturally occurring capsids so that we can then predict using mathematical models their evolutionary predecessor. So we have found a way to predict that the capsids that exist in this library here preceded in the evolutionary sequence of, of capsids coming to us today, all of these capsids here that we have circled in green that you can see over here, the tropism of them in the human body. And importantly, the members of this library differ in very important ways from naturally occurring capsids. And one of the ones that we have found and we are continuing to develop is one that we've called ANC-80L65. And this one differs from its closest known relative by 64 amino acids or proteins. So it's known, we know exactly how and where it differs from all of the other capsids that are associated with it. And so that we can have a deep understanding of what, the, um, what these different changes have done and how they all work together and how they are different from the naturally occurring capsids. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. 
So I wanna show you a little bit of data um, from the ANC ADL65. It's a new or novel AAV that gets to the brain more effectively. And what we have here over to the right is a human body where we've labeled different ways that you can introduce gene therapies into, into the human body. And here, um, right at the base of the spine, we've already heard about this, the intracisterna magna, which is the ICM labeled here on the figure. And then the intrathecal, which we've also heard about today, especially with the um, ASOs, is the lumbar puncture labeled here. And what we have here is data from three different parts of the brain, the frontal cortex, the motor cortex and the parietal cortex. So these are three important parts of the brain. And this is the AAV9. So AAV9 is a naturally occurring capsid. And from our understanding of naturally occurring capsids, it's the one that is most efficient at getting to the brain. And this is what our data have shown us with a marker that's called green fluorescent protein. And this is a protein that we put inside um, where that regulatory gene, I'm sorry, where the therapeutic gene would have been in the AAV construct that quite literally glows fluorescent green when we look at it um, from an imaging perspective. If you could go to the next slide for me, the green bars now show you exactly the same data from the same experiment. So the AAV9 and the ANC ADL65 were tested in the same experiment. And this is how much gene expression we're getting with the ANC ADL65 relative to the AAV9 in each of these brain regions. So the frontal motor and parietal cortex, you can see that the ANC ADL65 is expressing much more of that fluorescent protein than the AAV9. And interestingly, if we look at the lumbar puncture data, we can see that the lumbar puncture, which is a much less invasive means of administering gene therapies than is the ICM, that the lumbar puncture data for the ANC ADL65, we're getting more expression in these areas of the brain than we did with AAV9 when it was um, administered much closer to the brain and in a much more invasive way with the ACM. ICM. And so we are continuing to study this novel AAV for uses in gene therapy. And um, that is what we'd like to introduce, how we'd like to introduce ourselves today. And thank you for your attention.